and well your mind what is that do you remember those old drug partnership for drug free america your mind the mind is a terrible thing to waste and uh you know i think life is really a sort of a funny exercise in trying to figure out like where does your mind belong in conversations in relationships and then how much is your feelings actually balancing out the way that you think right and i'm seeking balance i believe that nature shows me that balance is in everything life and death and you know um things growing and then things becoming stagnant and things becoming disruptive and then becoming calm again so there is always an ebb and flow in nature that we really don't mess with and most of the time we can't mess with it because mother nature knows no bounds and isn't driven by human nature it's the other way around <laughs> as we know um and so this nature that i have is out of balance and i find that this is true when i have simple conversations and when i end up walking away from conversations and seeing this kind of I don't know, want, I know if I want to use the word struggle, but definitely conflict between my mind and emotion. And so this, today's example was a very simple thing. You know, somebody asked me a very simple question that for the past couple of years has caused me a lot of conflict answering this question. And, um, and, and if you had asked me this question a couple of years ago, I would have been much more disrupted, right? So the, converse, the question would come in, it would land in my brain, and there'd be a response in my body of feeling conflicted, feeling uncomfortable, feeling even anxious as to, should I answer this question this way or that way? And really is, do I want to even answer the question at all, right? And now, as time has, you know, passed, and time makes everything different, and time puts things in a different light, especially when I control my emotional reaction, uh, now I have a different response. And so this is the thing that I think a lot of people get confused about or don't understand or aren't clear about. They're like, well, I just need to express my feelings. Absolutely, you're, you're totally right. At the same time, I don't necessarily know that express the feelings is the right word. Feel my feelings is definitely more in tune with what I'm seeking. Because what happens is, is if you ask me a question, my mind jumps on it, my emotions become disrupted. Then what happens is the very logic becomes sort of like broken up by this emotion. And then I'm fueled intellectually and fueled by this emotion. And then I start responding emotionally and then it makes it bigger. And then I'm more disrupted. And there's a whole chain reaction that sort of forces like fortifies my opinions and fortifies this way that I think that needs to be right or needs to be winning or needs to be smart. As opposed to like, when there's a little gateway of openness in my mind or when the emotion comes up, but I'm able to kind of just sort of not respond to the emotion. I'm not saying not feel it. I'm not saying that. I'm saying not respond. So in other words, like if you say something that makes me angry and then I go, Bleh! It's like a whole bunch of other things then start to catapult into action that produce more future reactions. And that when my body and my emotions and my mind get disrupted like that continually, um, it will affect my peace of mind. It will affect my physical health. It will affect my sense of well being and peace and contentment. And so, this question, when it was asked this morning, because I'm months now away from it, was really like, oh no, not that, but that. Okay, fine, fine, okay, great, that's that, da 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 da. And here's what I realized, is that by attempting to not respond so emotionally, I mean, time has changed things, but also the lack of emotional response has made it so that my mind can almost an now answer a question independent of the emotion. And the emotion isn't ruling how I speak and how I react because that's how it was. It was like this reactive thing that got me all like fuckocted and messed up in my head. And the truth is, is I want more peace and I can still have the same feelings. I still have the same feelings today that I had about that situation six or 12 months ago. But the difference is, is I'm like, it just doesn't matter. And here's what happens. It's almost like I've separated my emotions from my thinking, still have the same opinions, still have the same feelings about it. But what's happened is that now it's like the question get asked and my mind starts chirping, chirping. Like, why ask it? Why ask it? Should you answer that? Don't answer that. And my body doesn't react emotionally. So I can just answer the question. I'm not disturbed. 
and I can actually still have those feelings without making those feelings about what anybody else is saying or doing or what, what anybody else thinks about me. And there's a separation now and that separation is clean and I'm able to be in the conversation and answer the question and not have this feeling of malaise and disruption that in fact is, is negative to my well-being. So hopefully that makes sense. You know, what I'm trying to put forth here is this idea of balance between mind and body and even a sense of separation from uh, what I think to how I feel. Maybe that helps you a little bit today if you find yourself overthinking, over-emotionalizing, or in any way out of balance. Certainly get in touch either through Facebook message or Nicole at Nicole Devlin. And I'm happy to talk about whatever you have going on that's disrupting your life, keeping you from peace and um, making it so that you don't have more joy. Because life's short, man, really short. Thanks for spending time with me. I appreciate that today. Have a great day.